So I'll be talking about the divergence operator here. So this part of the equation of Gauss's law. A normal explanation of this divergence operator is that it kind of measures flow around a vector field. So for example, if you have a positively charged particle sitting here, we can see around this circle here, we have an outwards flow of vectors. And so we say the divergence is positive. Or in this example, we have a negatively charged particle and around the same region, the vectors will point inwards as if this particle was a sink. And so we say the divergence around this field here is negative. There's also a different scenario. Vectors just pointing in one direction with the same size. It could be wind moving around with no turbulence. And wherever we put our circle, there are as many vectors going in as going out. And so the divergence is zero everywhere. So that's a fine and good explanation, I think, but we can do better. It will make things easier to understand. Understand. The example we looked at, we only had a couple of vectors drawn, but of course this is just a representation. So in reality, there will be infinitely many vectors, just like between one and zero, there's infinitely many numbers. And the reason there is an infinite amount of vectors is of course, because the vector field is given by an equation. So for example, this equation would render this vector field. And again, we only draw some vectors or another equation, one over R squared will result in this field here. Now taking the divergence means that everywhere in this field we measure how much is flowing in or out. Not in a big area, but in an infinitely small sphere or actually point, I guess. And we do that everywhere on the field. So now before taking the divergence operator, every point on space had a vector pointing in some direction. But after taking the divergence operator, every point of space has a number associated measuring how much of this vector is flowing in or out. Let's try an example with our previous equations. So let's go back to this one. If we take the divergence of this field, it turns out we get this equation. And so when you plug in the numbers, this is what the divergence looked like. I can also try with the other example. And here comes something special because we have a one over R to the power of two. The divergence is zero everywhere. I'm telling you this because that's how charges behaves. So this equation represented an electric field of a charge. And this is what this equation means. Everywhere we don't have a charge, the divergence is zero. So here it's zero, here it's zero, here it's zero. But here we have a charge. And so the divergence equals to the charge density over epsilon zero. I know it might not seem as interesting, but it is extremely important for calculations where symmetry is special. For example, if we have an infinitely big charged plane, so here we have charges, it will create an E-field going out like this. Now we can construct what we call a Gaussian surface in the E-field. It's just whatever surface we want. And so the idea is to measure how much is flowing in and out. Because we know the divergence is zero everywhere, we can construct whatever surface we want so some weird potato, a sphere, a box, or we can construct something that matches the symmetry such that the calculation will be easier to do. So here it is a cylinder. The electric vector field flow will be zero if we don't have any charges in capsules because the divergence is zero everywhere. And so we can place this Gaussian sphere so it encapsules some of this charged plane. And now we can calculate the electric fields. Classic.